Sling TV has a bold new look, but not all users are celebrating the changes. I'm going to break down the pros and cons next. I've spent a lot of time testing out the new app, and I even sat down with a Sling TV executive, and he answered all of my questions. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the app and highlight the changes. Let's get started. Sling TV announced its new app back in late May, calling it the most comprehensive update in its history. Amazon Fire TV users, they got access first. Now Roku, other devices will follow. At the time of this recording, the new user experience that you see right here is still rolling out to various Roku devices throughout the summer. So Sling TV loaned me a Roku with the app pre-installed to test it out a little bit early. But as a paying Sling TV subscriber, I also have access to the old user experience. You'll see me compare the two in this video. Let's take a closer look. First up, the home screen, and it definitely makes a better first impression. Take a look at the old look, and again, the new experience. Sling TV has moved the main navigation from the top of the screen, now it's on the left. Plus, it now has multiple thumbnail sizes, and this blue-gray background color that makes the white text really pop. At the top of the home screen, you see those larger thumbnails with trending content. This section is powered by Sling's recommendation engine, so it's not based entirely on what you actually watch. It changes throughout the day depending on what is airing live. Below that, smaller thumbnails in the recommended for you section, and some of these suggestions are live, others on demand. There are also labels here like top show pick, trending, and you might like. Continuing on to my channels, and this is different from favorite channels, which I'll talk about in a minute. In this area, you get fast access to the channels that you watch most frequently, and you don't have to go into the live guide to get to them. There's one downside. I only wish that there was a way to manually remove channels from this section. Right now, you can't. Next up on the home screen, browse categories. And when you click on any of these thumbnails, you'll see what's available to watch right now. So this is similar to a drop-down menu on a website. Following that are sections for your recent recordings and continue watching, also a watch list. Toward the bottom of the home screen, some more recommendations based on timely content. These changes to the home screen were made for two reasons, to help you get to content faster and with fewer clicks. They may even reduce the amount of time that you spend in the live guide, but there is still a live guide and changes have happened there too. These changes may not be as popular with all users. I'll explain that next. This is the new Sling TV Live Guide, and as with the home screen, the update is a lot easier on the eyes, but we gotta talk here about the functionality. Starting at the very top of the Live Guide, you can filter the channels. This here is the All Channels view, but there's also Alphabetical or Your Favorites. This is an improvement because previously, a few extra clicks were required to select any specialized view like Your Favorites. Favoriting channels, also easier than ever before. From the live guide, you just arrow to the left and click OK on the heart. And after that, that channel will be included when you use the favorites view of the live guide. Now, if you've had Sling before, you may remember it had two versions of the live guide, the grid guide and the channel guide. The new experience does not have a separate channels guide, but instead, if you want to access content from a specific channel, let's say, you can click on the channel logo. It's positioned right between the favorites icon and what's airing right now. Sling told me that most people prefer the grid guide anyway, so we're gonna focus on that right now. When you navigate through the guide, your current selection will expand, and it'll have a title of the show, a description, and a graphic. The old version of the app, I'll switch back and show you that it was just a lot more plain. But there's more changes here. From the new app, you can click OK on any selected program from the live guide, and you go directly to the live airing. Or, your other option, you can click the star symbol and set a recording right from the guide. With the old version, there's an extra click. You see that after I choose a program, I'm taken here to a screen where I have to select again whether I want to watch or record. So far, so good, right? Well, there's a couple things about the old grid guide that I wish Sling would have kept with this new version of the app. We'll talk about that now. First, the old app made it easy to change the grid guide view to a different date. Now this came in handy when I wanted to browse what was coming up over the next week, 
but also if I knew something was airing and I wanted to set a recording in advance. With the new app, your only option is to scroll ahead using the right arrow. And second, channel surfing. From the old app, you could be watching something live and click the down button to view the grid guide. And while you're browsing, your show will just keep playing in the background and you can click the back button to access it again. But also with the old app, you could click the up arrow and channel surf along the bottom of the screen. You can see here the filters, all channels, favorites, and more. But the new Slink TV app does not have all of these options. Now, when you select down arrow, a menu will appear at the bottom of the screen and it will feature recent channels only. However, as of this recording, it does not offer access to the full guide from this view. When I spoke to Sling TV about all these changes, they made it clear to me that they are listening to you and they are open to making adjustments all along the way. So leave them feedback. You can do so in the comments below. I'm sure someone from Sling TV will be checking the comments of this video. Moving on to DVR. Now the DVR section is not new but there was never a shortcut to DVR on the main navigation until now. Previously, you accessed your DVR from the home screen, but from the new app, here's what you're gonna see when you click on the DVR shortcut. At the top of the screen, three tabs, Recordings, Scheduled, and Trash. The Recordings tab displays by default, and this screen tracks your DVR storage, and show thumbnails for all of your recordings are displayed. When you select a program, you can watch it or adjust your recording options there. And here's something new. I'm on the recording screen and I've selected the recording that you see highlighted here. Now, when I click the star button on the Roku remote, it goes to the trash in just one click. If you've got fat fingers, that may be a bit dangerous, but you can always navigate to the trash tab to restore the program. Just like you did before, click star and it will be restored in one click. Now I skipped over the schedule tab, but that is just another way to see what you've already set to record and manage your recordings too. From this tab, recordings are displayed, starting with what's coming up the soonest. Right now, I wanna quickly go over the on-demand section before I talk about a more noticeable change to search. And here is that on-demand section. Like the home screen, it mixes up thumbnail sizes for a better browsing experience. But the top of the screen, that's where the real improvements have been made. You see how easy it is to switch between the tabs for your watch list, movies, TV shows, even kids programming. One quick note about the watch list though, when you add something to your watch list with Sling TV, that does not automatically record new episodes or even reruns. It just helps to organize what's available for you to watch. So if you are following a particular show, remember to set recordings in addition to adding it to your watch list. That way you can create a more complete library of episodes to stream. I promised I'd tell you about the change to search, so here it is. Look at the old app. You see a keyboard displayed, your recent searches below, and popular searches to the right. Now onto the new app, and where's the keyboard? Well, it's hidden. Sling TV tells me that's because a lot of people find what they're looking for more quickly by browsing the recommended searches as well as the recent searches. But the keyboard, it is still there. It just requires an extra click to expand it. I've got a few other features with this new app that I thought were worth mentioning. I just couldn't figure out a better place to tell you about them. So here they are additional features. Remember back when I showed you the recent channels list? You access that by clicking down while watching any live program. Well, to the right of the recent channels, you'll find two other tabs, details and settings. From the settings tab, that's where you can turn closed captioning on and off. And you can also adjust the video quality. It's set to automatic by default, but there are other options you may want to select, especially if you encounter any buffering while watching live TV. And the last feature that I want to show you is the ability to pause, rewind, and fast forward while watching live TV. This is great if you ever need to step away from your show for a moment or two. And when you rewind and fast forward with Sling TV, whether that is the live TV or something on demand, there's a small video preview box that will display. I use this all the time for my recordings when I want to skip through the ads. And now for some final thoughts. I think Sling TV's new app is better than the one it replaced, but I also understand the frustration of longtime subscribers because if you've used that channel surfing function for a couple of years or so and all of a sudden you can't use it anymore, that's going to affect the user experience 
in a negative way. But new users may not care as much, and that's because Sling has done a really good job of streamlining the navigation and reducing the number of clicks it takes to get to your content. I found myself clicking into the live guide a lot less because everything I needed was right on the home screen. All this talk about the app, sure, it's important, but it only really matters if Sling TV has your favorite channels at a monthly price that you can afford. And to help you compare all that, I'll drop a link below to a resource on michaelsaves.com. And let me know what you think about Sling TV's new app in the comments. Do you like what you just saw? Would you make any changes? I look forward to reading your comments and seeing you back here soon. Until next time.